So welcome to the live stream, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, Bloomberg broke the news that GitHub uh, is uh, acquired by Microsoft and uh, both people inside the company and external to GitLab Inc had questions. So we figured we go on a live stream and uh, try to answer them. If you have questions, please uh, ask them in the YouTube chat. Um, apparently that is going about pizza and me baking pizza. I have to disappoint everyone. Uh, it will probably not be pizza tonight. I'm not sure what's up. Um, I was having my anniversary weekend, three year wedding anniversary weekend in Tahoe, came back a bit early for, uh, for all of this happening, but I, uh, I burnt my foot with, uh, because I was standing on the pedal board too long. Anyway, that is about as relevant as the pizza. Uh, and I'm not seeing any good questions in the YouTube chat right now. So I'm opening it up to anybody here who has a question about what's happening. Hey, you said one question I saw in uh, the chat was about how many repos have been transferred from GitHub so far. Maybe you could talk about uh, what we know about that. Yeah, there's, um, there's some monitoring. I think our public monitoring uh, broke because it's number one on Hacker News right now. I think we also broke Hacker News because that was uh, down for a minute. Um, but maybe someone here can, uh, can look that up. Uh, there's a difference between number of users, number of projects, number of repositories. Uh, if someone has an idea, that would be great. Uh, the only number I know is that moving to GitLab, uh, the Twitter account has over a thousand tweets. Sneaky so crowd said I'm, asks. I'm, oh, sorry, Go said ahead, I just Brenda. got those numbers. Um, looks like uh, there's been about, I'm just, I'm just doing the math, adding up the data points in my head, uh, about 3,000 every six hours for the past 24. Cool. Thanks for that. Sneaky crowd asks, is GitLab having any scalability concerns right now other than our public monitoring uh, being down? I don't think so yet. We did have to scale up uh, a number of uh, repository servers earlier. We did that and it should be good now, but every, we're, off, we're standing by and we're just waiting for the storm. We especially think that tomorrow when probably there's, uh, there's gonna be a lot more news and a lot more people online who are not asleep or watching the Warriors game, uh, it's gonna be a lot more busy. But for now, for now, GitLab.com is online. And of course, there's also lots of people downloading GitLab and running it themselves. Quellhorst asks, can you talk about the backend server arch uh, architecture we're using? Uh, cloud? Yes, uh, we're hosted on Azure of all places. So we're gonna be moving from Azure to uh, Google Cloud Platform uh, soon. And maybe someone, a moderator, can link to our architecture documentation. Same what you get if you type GitLab architecture. Oscar Montiel asks, what does Microsoft buying GitHub mean to the way GitHub operates? And what does that change where you, changes where you see it coming from? Yeah, obviously, we're not GitHub, so we can't comment on that. The only, the only thing that we can speculate is that, that Microsoft shown recently that they care a lot of, about Azure. They now have like an Azure department, no longer a Windows department. Um, and they were working with uh, closely with GitHub already to, uh, uh, to, work, to, to work on that. So, so we think it's related to that, but that's speculation. We'll have to hear from GitHub when they, uh, when they send out the press release. Brett Jones asks, what kind of effort are you putting into speeding up the overall performance of GitLab? A lot, a lot. Um, so there's, there's maybe two separate things. First of all, we're trying to keep GitLab.com online right now with the onslaught. Um, we're, we're scaling up all the servers, but we've also done a lot of performance improvements. Um, those are detailed every, every month on the release posts and things that I'm looking forward to that are still working, that we're still working on is the merge request view uh, that should get completely into view and that should get a lot faster then. And Gitterly 1.0, with Gitterly 1.0, we'll be able to uh, deprecate the NFS servers and uh, have a lot more reliability in the Git repository hosting.
Josh says, great job. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> How can Microsoft eventually destroy GitHub? But we're not going to answer that. There's a question about, is the GitHub acquisition 100% confirmed yet or not? Said. Yeah. Um, the way it was worded in the Bloomberg article was that it was a done deal. So we're going off of that. Someone stopped watching Silicon Valley. Yeah, you'll be able to catch up anytime. I, I think they stopped, they stopped after like five episodes or something. The last one was 51% or something. It was genius, like usual. Alexander asks, if more and more people will start coming from, to GitLab from GitHub, do you think GitLab can become a complete replacement? Um, Alexander, that's a great question. I think there's a couple of stages to it. I think uh, um, what we tried first is to become the most popular for self-hosted. And it's in our strategy. Maybe someone can link this sequence paragraph in our strategy in the YouTube chat. Um, First one, get most popular self-hosted. Second part, get to most revenue. That's where we're focused on now. The third one is get to most popular SaaS for private repositories. And I think that's, that's what you're seeing now is that we're at least uh, growing a bit faster than we used to there. I think the last thing to move will be the open source projects. We've, we're already seeing open source projects moving. Uh, Gnome recently to a self-hosted server. But for example, F-Droid is hosted on GitLab.com. But there's a huge network effect there where you want to be hosted on the service that has the most developers. And although you can log in to GitLab.com with your GitHub account, it, it makes sense that, uh, that those will be the last uh, projects to move. So I, I, I don't think, I don't have the illusion that tomorrow all the open source projects will move that, that will happen later and, and that's fine. I'm seeing URLs being pasted in, uh, in our Zoom chat, but I'm not seeing them on the YouTube chat. And I, I think most people can see them there. So, but you have to be a moderator to post them in the YouTube chat. So if someone can do that, that would be great. Thanks. Brennan uh, linked, will there be an easy way to migrate GitHub pages? We already have GitLab pages, uh, but automatic TLS is a feature uh, we still have to do I think for the automatic TLS for the custom domains, that is. People like our Tanuki better than the Octocat, although they call it a fox. It's a Tanuki people. Um, and it's a Tanuki because uh, it can, our old logo kind of looked like a raccoon. So this is kind of like a raccoon dog. And it's a fox because foxes are super smart. They collaborate, they're super social, and they work together. Just like more than 2,000 people contributed code to GitLab. Anybody in the Zoom call has a que uh, with a question? If not, we'll go on with the YouTube. What's your favorite operating system? I'm torn here, but I still Ubuntu, but I, I couldn't. We had to use WebEx to call with customers and WebEx didn't run on Linux. So I switched and I, I'm, I'm doing this from my MacBook. Said another question that came in was um, about our free tier um, and free features. Um, one said, are there going to be more free features? And another one said, do we have to charge a fee in the future because we'll have too many free users? Maybe you could talk about our, our view on uh, our free tier and, and open source users. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Brandon. Uh, I, I don't foresee any changes to the free uh, tiers um, might be because of heating up competition with GitHub that, that we will be forced to do something, uh, but uh, we don't have any plans. And, and we, uh, we, can, we can handle the influx of free users to GitLab.com uh, without a problem. Uh, Steve in the YouTube chat asked, do you reckon GitHub's acquisition will change your remote working paradigm? 
uh, no, we, we, we don't expect that to change. We're 270 people from 270 locations. And even today, we're, we're all uh, remote, or maybe especially today because it's a Sunday. Someone asked whether I'm the CEO. Yeah, sorry for not introducing myself. I'm Sid, I'm the CEO of GitLab and a co-founder. There was another question about Tanuki swag. I know it's not exactly uh, We have a, a shop, hard I think. It's, it's, it's uh, shop.gitlab.com. Uh, and I hope there's stuff in there. If you can still get them, I, I recommend the sunglasses. Although the hoodies are pretty sweet too, Brendan. The hoodie, uh, the hoodie is in stock. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, they're, they're sweet. Yay, the public monitoring is back up. Yay. Uh, we had to reboot a server. That takes a while. Jorge asked, does GitLab handles roles like admins and contributors that only get write access to some repositories? Yeah, for sure. There's uh, five different tiers of users and you can mix and match them. So very elaborate permission system. Juan Carlos asked, is GitLab ready for many migrations from GitLab? I think you mean from GitHub. Uh, we're as ready as we can be, but uh, we're, we've never done this before. So we'll see how it goes. Another question that came in, Sid, is, is there an easy way to migrate GitLab, um, excuse me, GitHub pages, um, specifically GitHub's custom pages and automatic TLS? Yeah, so we don't have the TLS for automatic pages and uh, it's annoying because I know because I did it for sites.com, my legal first name, um, and I did it last week. And even our instructions are outdated. Um, you you have to download Let's Encrypt and then you have to put a special file inside, uh, inside the repository, have Let's Encrypt, check that, and then you get the keys and then you can paste them into the GitLab interface. But it's, it's not where we want it to be and we're, we're working on, on making it happen. Maybe can, someone can paste the issue and we'd really appreciate help there. So we have an issue about, um, so we have a question about uh, hosting FPX or STL files. So I think those are binary files. So I think the question is about um, hosting binary files and having an artifactory. Yeah, so uh, thanks Mattia. Uh, I see it's from Snail Mill Games. Um, the, there's a couple of things. I'm not sure exactly how big the files are. You, these people are talking about, you can just add them to a Git repo, but you also can do if they're really big, you can add them as Git LFS, uh, large files. Um, that way uh, they're not part of the Git repo, but they still get communicated and GitLab has support for that. Um, so those are basically your two options and recommend if they're big and they tend to be big, uh, you use uh, Git LFS. So a couple of other questions. Uh, there's questions about uh, about being acquired or going for an IPO. There was a question specifically about that by Alexander Snornikov. Do you guys plan to IPO or be acquired? We're planning to IPO and uh, we, we detailed so on our strategy page, maybe someone can link it. However, we have external investors, so it's not totally up to us um, what happens. What we're trying to do is grow as fast as possible and make sure we're al always more positive about the future than, uh, than other people. But it's um, what we're seeing in the market right now is that maybe companies like us don't get bought for the revenue, but get bought for the developers, which is uh, something I, I didn't anticipate. Sad error 256 asks, what are you guys going to do if you run out of storage? Um, add more servers. So we, we got sharding. Uh, I think we're up to 170 terabytes for the, the Git repo. So I think it's gonna be fine. 
Aaron go ask, can you give a quick diff between the free tier and, and, and the pay tiers? Um, the, the easiest thing to go is to go to our pricing page. I think the thing to know is even our free version, like the whole scope of GitLab, all the way from creating issues and managing them all the way to monitoring your apps, that's all part of it. But as you start working with more and more people and getting more and more advanced in your DevOps, um, it, it pays to, uh, to buy the extra features. It's Rafa actually Nas. up to 194 terabytes, said so. Just Thanks, <laughs> almost at 200. I, I posted the, uh, the monitoring link since that's back. Awesome, but, yeah, and very proud that that is public. What's the biggest thing that worries us about the GitHub acquisition? Um, in the short term, we're worried about um, GitLab.com failing. In the long term, uh, Microsoft is a is a formidable competitor. They got lots of talented people. They they really embraced open source, and you only have to look at VS Code to see how good they are in making developer tools. And they got a big budget because they they. Azure is, go is going to bring in a lot of money for them and anything they can do to drive adoption, there's budget for that. So uh, we're not underestimating what, what we're up against here. Another question came in said about what solutions do we have for file preview and web visual diff? Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, so I think what's really cool in GitLab right now is that it has a web IDE. So you can look at multiple files, edit multiple files and do that. Uh, there's also, of course, all the regular diffing. Um, there, I think it's interesting that GitLab was the first one where you could solve a merge conflict in the, in the user interface. Um, as we get bigger, uh, we'll support kind of diffing for more files. Right now we support mostly images. The problem is that we want to make sure GitLab is good for self-hosted too. So we've got to be a bit careful with adding dependencies. Another question that came up, Sid, that I think um, I'd be interested to hear you talk about is um, why do you think women in tech should migrate to GitLab? And can you explain <laughs> how it works for student licensing? Student licensing. So for um, for student licenses, students are free. So if you're if you're a university and you want to get a pay tier of GitLab, you don't pay for the uh, students. And I think women should migrate to GitLab just just as good as the men. Um, I've always uh, I'm I'm really what I'm really looking forward to. I've been involved with uh, Rails Girls. Uh, my my wife is actually organizing Rails Girls Amsterdam soon again. So she's flying in because she lives with me in San Francisco. So she's going to fly down to Europe for that. And um, with GitLab, you have everything in a single application. So that should make it easier to get started because I've had so many. I was a coach a lot of times. And you sit next to someone, and you have to explain, oh, now you download Git and now you download Xcode and now you download this and that. And it's like, what? What's all that, that stuff? You're installing Ruby on my computer and, and, and it's taking so long. We have, we have every Rails Girls event has an installation party the Friday before it, an installation party. That means like we have to spend four hours installing stuff. So you have to come a day early so we can actually work on that and not have it be a distraction during the Saturday where we do actual work. It's super sad and uh, it's always a lot of fun, but I'd rather have just a party without the installation part. So with GitLab and the web IDE and auto DevOps, we're really trying to make that easier. So if you're if you're new to programming, you can start and you don't have to install all that stuff on your PC. And if you come on, like I had people come up to me and say, I'm sorry, it's a Windows computer because someone else told them they shouldn't come in with a Windows computer. Like that's ridiculous. We should, we should fix that and, and not have, whether you have a Chromebook or a Windows computer or, or a laptop, everything should work. You shouldn't have to own an Apple laptop just to uh, get started with programming. You shouldn't have to spend four hours at uh, installing it. Uh, Sid, there was a question about uh, the reasons why we're moving to uh, GCP from Azure. Yeah. Um, we're moving because uh, we really like Kubernetes uh, and we want to run GitLab.com on top of Kubernetes. And right now GCP has the best uh, Kubernetes service. Um, and it's easy to, if you have projects on GitLab, you can also add like a, a Kubernetes cluster 
to it. So GitLab automatically deploys and runs tests and security tests and everything on that. But uh, we want to eat our own dog food and, uh, and make sure that we run GitLab on top of it as well. Peter Chung asks, what are you excited about seeing coming down the pipeline for auto DevOps? Oh, there's, there's so much coming down. Thanks for asking, Peter. Um, it's already like we're going to GA, make it generally available on 11.0. That's the 22nd of this month. It's less than 20 days away. Um, I'm super excited about that. Uh, you just push your code and we make sure your unit tests are run, your integration tests are run. We run performance tests with like site speed. In the future, we're going to run low tests, uh, but already run like security tests. If you have GitLab Ultimate, run four different kinds of security tests, SAS, DAS, container scanning, dependency scanning. It's, it's really amazing how much stuff we're kind of doing by default. And it's getting better where your logs, we're going to have logs by default. We already have metrics where you can see all the... Um, all the metrics in Prometheus. Uh, we're going to add tracing. So having that all work from the start, I'm, I'm super excited about that. And Enda is asked how to follow incoming features. Uh, I think a great page to look at is our direction page and our product vision page, uh, which is linked below that. So maybe so someone can add those links. I said I'd like to add, they can always opt into the uh, newsletter by choice. And we yes. send those. Good one. How do they find, do you just Google GitLab newsletter or how do you, how do you opt into that? Yeah, we'll tweet about it and we'll put a direct link. <laughs> Someone asked whether we can migrate the stars on the repositories as well. I'm sorry, no, but you'll have to start from scratch there. I, I do hope you, you like the GitLab stars. So there's a question about how much of GitLab's infrastructure is inside the Google Cloud. So I'm guessing that's in terms of how many servers do we have or which parts of GitLab are currently in GCP. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, we have a few hundred uh, servers right now. Let me share my screen. So this is a problem. I'll, I'll go to the non-public monitoring. I'm sorry. There's a bit more information here and it's due to, we have some stuff still in Influx instead of Prometheus. And I think what's, where we have most um, servers is with auto scaling. So these are like the number of, of servers. It's very low, but normally this is more than a thousand servers uh, on, a, on a busy day. But we scale it up and down uh, according to how much uh, demand there is. Yeah, so now it's only a few hundred, uh, few hundred machines. Yes, speaking of that, Sid, there's a question about how we're planning to afford the expenses that will arise from the vast majority of programmers switching to GitLab. Yeah, so expenses go up, but also income goes up. So um, the nice the nice thing about software is that you make it once and you can sell it multiple times. So although there's costs associated with hosting, uh, I think we'll also have more and more companies uh, switching and and more more opportunity to convince those companies to start uh, start paying for the extra features of GitLab. Giovanni van Geel asks. Which features are you lacking versus GitHub? Um, a few, I think they're pretty detailed, but I hope someone can paste a link to the missing section of our features page where we detail those. I linked to the comparison page, but I will add that in as well, Sid. Cool, I'm very proud that on our features page, we have a missing section. And Sid, there was an interesting question about are private repos going to remain free? Yes.
Snail Mail Games asks, since you're planning on using Kubernetes, will you support the recently announced Kubernetes GPU containers? Yes, um, we don't have any plans right now, but I do think like multiple times of multiple kinds of compute is the future. So where you now have basically kind of CPU network and disk, you're going to see more GPUs. You're going to see the TPUs uh, for, for TensorFlow, for the machine learning. Uh, you see now hashing machines, machines dedicated to uh, hashing, for example, Bitcoin. And we're going to see more and more of that. Um, so you have Intel now releasing processes with FGPAs on it. Uh, you're going to see more and more, and it might also go to the boundary where you now have a, a typical cloud has like tens of locations. Maybe uh, because of latency, those will move closer to the edge, closer to, uh, for example, um, the mobile networks. We're going to see, but I think that Kubernetes is, is going to be a great force in this and, and we'll uh, try to support whatever Kubernetes supports. Could we add the ability to watch and view stargazers? So people that start your repo, I think that'd be great. Um, but I think that would probably be a feature proposal as we call it, something that we'd love for someone to contribute to GitLab. So there's a question on uh, transparency. David says, I'm a big fan of transparency. Can we continue to rely on you guys letting us know anything we need to know with regards to uptime um, for example, the intern who tripped the circuit breaker, et cetera. So we'll be continue to be transparent as we are today. Yes, trans transparency is one of our six values and we'll, we'll keep doing that. And thanks for appreciating it. And if someone can paste a link to our values page, that'd be great. They said there's a question about uh, for those not looking at an immediate transition, is there a reliable way to keep GitHub and GitLab in sync without needing to couple together Bash or other scripts uh, to manage them both from the CLI? Yeah, thanks, David. And who asked that question? This is uh, Dave Astor, Solution Architect with GitLab. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I know who you are. I, I'm, I thought it was coming from the YouTube uh, chat. Uh, so I want to make sure we attribute uh, the people that, uh, um, uh, that, ask, uh, that ask questions. I apologize, I said that was from uh, Michael Skelton, I believe. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, Michael, thanks for, uh, thanks for asking. Um, the, um, there is uh, support for mirroring. So GitLab can do both, uh, but we only support one type of mirroring on the free plan. And I think that is having your repo in GitLab and then pushing it out to GitHub. So if you have GitLab as the primary location, you can make sure you keep a mirror on GitHub for example, to make sure people can easily find it if they're searching there. And as usual, there's a link to the docs. So maybe Dave Astor, or sometimes he's called disaster in the company. It's not because he is one, but because he's a, he's a force so of nature. A, it's a compliment um, to you. Can we do more streams like this in the future? This is seriously better than HBO. It comes from coding blocks. Well, thank you very much. I, I think it's 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 exciting. I, I like to do it, but uh, I think we'll do it on special occasions uh, because there's nothing sadder than sitting in a live stream all by yourself. Um, so we, we need a kind of a, a minimal amount of people. Um, but if you enjoy those on our YouTube channel, we have lots of content like this. Uh, so we got, for example, an AMA with uh, Vili Ilchev, one of our investors uh, that we recently uploaded. And there's like GitLab 101 sessions and lots of functional group updates. And we'll start live streaming the functional group updates more in the future. So I'm excited about those. We have a really interesting question from Josh Manners in the YouTube, in the YouTube chat. So if GitLab had a chance to be completely rewritten from the ground up, would you still use Ruby or more or, or move to a more performance language such as Golang? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I think every, like the year you started kind of determines what you were written in. So GitHub, GitLab, Shopify, uh, we're all written in Ruby on Rails. I think it's amazing. I think there's, there's no more productive platform than Ruby on Rails. And if you look at the amount of gems, I think we have over 1000 non-unique gems in GitLab 
that's all stuff that we didn't have to write and we can rely on. However, I, I can see if you're starting out today, you probably write something in Node uh, based on Express uh, and go a bit heavier on the GraphQL and the, and the few. That being said, we have our first uh, GraphQL endpoint coming soon. So I'm excited about uh, adding those. I guess that another uh, question that came in, but I know I know there's an issue for somewhere that while I'm talking, somebody can look up. Um, is does GitLab have a plan to integrate uh, Gitcoin or Patreon um, for open source developer support? Yeah, uh, we're not against it, but we don't have a plan. We tried ourselves with uh, bug bounties, and uh, we found that was hard. I do think Patreon uh, makes a lot more sense, and giving visibility to your Patreon sponsors. Uh, on like a source code coding repository that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so we're open to a feature like that. Um, there's also, uh, we've also seen examples of people customizing GitLab and making kind of gamifying it a bit. Um, I think that's also uh, interesting. For example, you could get like, right now you can get upvotes for every comment and every merge request and then maybe adding a total score of, of how many upvotes you got. Now I propose we don't do upvotes for issues because that's issues are easy. I think good comments and merge requests are much uh, are, are, are a bigger contribution. Um, so I love to see something like that as well, but it makes sense to me to list kind of automatically list your Patreon sponsors or something like that. Although you can probably also do that with a link to Patreon. So it's a bit like, should it be in the GitLab interface or not? Don't have an opinion there. Yeah, and I found that link in, uh, for that issue. So, and you actually talked about Gitcoin in that issue. So I, I linked that in the chat. All right, great. It's, uh, I'm always on the record and I, it's good too because I frequently forget everything I talked about. Uh, Sid, Alfred Myers from uh, YouTube is asking, uh, how is GCP's Kubernetes different from Azure's AKS? And when did we decide to go the GCP route? Yeah. Um, I think, so Google Container Engine is a bit uh, more mature. Uh, they were earlier. I think they, they, spend, a, they spend a bit more time. They, it's working in a bit more scenarios. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, Microsoft will catch up. I think they hired Brendan uh, who, who created Kubernetes. So they're, they're going full speed as well. Um, decision to move to uh, GCP was taken uh, before this acquisition uh, was announced or uh, uh, so way before that, months ago. Brendan, there's uh, a question we uh, we answered said in the in the chat, but maybe you can talk about it. They were just kind of asking about what stack we're on, you know, PHP or MySQL or Node, like. Maybe you could just talk about our, our technology stack. I know we talked about Rails a little bit, but maybe you could talk about the rest of it. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, a lot of code in GitLab is Ruby on Rails. Then for all the code that needs to be more performant, it's written in Go. So we've got several Go applications inside uh, GitLab. It's not a kind of a pure micro service architecture, but every time we find something that we kind of have to make more performant and we can isolate, we spin it out. An example of that is uh, GitLab Workhorse. An example is uh, Gitaly. Uh, Database-wise, uh, GitLab runs on both MySQL and Postgres, but we're big fans of Postgres. We're thinking that uh, it's, it has a lot of awesome changes every month. So we recommend people to use uh, Postgres if, uh, if they can. Other than that, um, I think there's a, there's some HA proxy in there for for our stack, and uh, there's a lot of Prometheus in there for the, for all the for all the metrics. Uh, big fans of Prometheus as well. Is there anything you would like to tell a GitHub user that has never used GitLab before, but who is nervous about? Switching is a question that comes from Ravelin One. Yeah, depends. Thanks for asking. Depends a bit why you're nervous about switching, but uh, I'd say uh, 
what you can try is give it a try with just one or two repos. And um, I think a, a great reason to switch is that with GitHub, you get the code hosting. With GitLab, you get the whole experience all the way from uh, issue creation to monitoring of what, you, what you've made in production. So um, things like auto DevOps, um, to, to create that on GitHub, you'll be stringing together a couple of applications. And on, on GitLab, it's all part of the same interface. And I think that's, uh, that's really neat. And you, you, should, uh, you should give it a try. Oh, and I forgot to mention in our stack that we're using Vue a lot. And uh, we've been on the record about that. We were one of the earlier big projects that were moving to uh, Vue, and it's been an awesome, awesome experience. Our, our front-end team has been very productive. And uh, I think a couple of years ago, um, our interface, our navigation wasn't up to snuff. It wasn't fast enough. It was, it was not great. And I think the front-end and UX team have done an amazing job. And although GitLab has a lot of um, functionality in it, we frequently hear that people like the way it's organized and they can navigate it. So Sid, uh, Stale Mail Games asks, uh, what Git client would you recommend for using GitLab? Additionally, what Git client do you use? Yeah, thanks. Um, if you get started, um, there's, there's different options. I think Git Tower is a great uh, Git client. Um, I do recommend at some point that people try to go to the command line. The problem is that all the, uh, the client, clients with the GUI have a limited set of functionality. And then when you need that extra functionality, if you then have to also make the switch to the command line, it's a lot to take in at the same time. So you rather kind of already do your day-to-day -day with the command line than when you hit that really hard problem, you have more of a feel for it. I use um, VS Code um, and the terminal window inside that. And VS Code, both because it's great, Microsoft did a great job, but also because the web IDE inside GitLab is based on a Monaco editor uh, of VS Code that Microsoft open sourced. And yeah, when I'm not using something local, I'm using the GitLab web IDE. Sid, uh, Josh Manders asks, uh, how are you enjoying Vue? I'm a React developer primarily, but I've never been unhappy in a Vue project. Yeah. Um, I'm. I don't have any experience in it. I, I, I can't even program JavaScript. I used to be a Ruby on Rails developer before uh, doing this, um, but uh, I'm, I'm hearing that our people like it. I looked at the code examples and it seems like Vue is just so, the, it's simple and beautiful and I, I, I love how those code samples uh, look. Um, it's, I think uh, Evan, I think did a great job of kind of simplifying and, and putting all the best practices together in one, uh, one thing. And there was this cadence where there was a new JavaScript framework coming out like every three months. And I think uh, you put a stop to that. So great to see that. Raven asked, uh, are you worried that feature creep will ever make GitLab too unwieldy? Rolling out new features every month, lots of features. Yes, uh, we're really worried about that. Um, it hasn't happened yet. Um, I think there's a couple of things that we can do to prevent like GitLab collapsing under its own weight. One of the things is boring solutions. So we, we always try to m make sure that any technical innovation we do is not something that's hard to understand because our mission is everyone can contribute. So we, we keep it simple. And I already started, when I first saw the code base, GitLab was a year in, 300 people contributed to it. I opened the project up and it was just, pure vanilla idiomatic rails. And we kept that spirit. Don't make it, don't make it harder than it should be. Think about it carefully, have your models and your abstractions um, as simple as they can be, but without, without trying to overdo it. And uh, I think that served as well. We got lots of automated tests. I think there's over hundred thousand tests now being run. If we, uh, if we check a commit, could be tens of thousands, but um, all those tests make sure it doesn't break and we're still able to add great new features. So uh, 
right now we're not worried. I'm, I'm super proud that uh, that we're able to um, expose it all in an interface that also uh, makes sense. Peter Chung asks, can GitLab CI completely replace Jenkins? Yes. Have you arc achieved feature parity yet? I think so. Um, Maybe someone can add a link of what Forrester said about uh, the comparison between GitLab CI and uh, Jenkins. And spoiler alert, uh, GitLab CI is much better. Another question that came in, um, well, not a question, a comment. I, I just thought you might like to hear it. Says, uh, Josh Manders said, the speed issues were what discouraged me last time I reviewed GitLab, but I have no qualms now. So great job there. Awesome. Josh, thanks so much. Glad to hear it's better. We're not happy yet, so we're still, we're still hiring. You know, any great uh, um, system reliability engineers, uh, send them uh, uh, site reliability engineers send them our way, uh, but uh, I'm glad to hear it, it's improved and it for sure has improved greatly. Still have a way to go, but uh, we're getting there. He said, um, I see a question um, asking you to just share some of your thoughts about improving GitLab's UI and social aspect. There's been some comments about that throughout the day that people are hoping that GitLab becomes more social. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I think we've, at, with GitLab, we really focused on what the users of GitLab want. And the users of GitLab tended to be larger organizations that were uh, self-managing their own installation. So there's lots of very advanced features if you want to work with a lots of teams. For example, we GitLab supports subgroups and many things like that. Um, only now are we seeing open source projects coming in like GNOME and Debian. And we hope that those open source projects will also kind of help us develop new, uh, new features aimed at open source. Both help us by asking for it and, and, and commenting on the, uh, on the relevant issues, but also kind of hope that, that uh, some of the features will be contributed. This said, got one here from uh, uh, Jorge Durango. Uh, is Bitbucket even a competitor? Yeah, uh, David, thanks for that. And uh, thanks, Michael Skelton and Jurge uh, for speaking up. Um, we, we don't tolerate in the YouTube chat, someone is uh, being uh, not commenting, not in, in, in accordance with our diversity values. So just please cut it out. That's, that's not how we operate. We won't tolerate that. And if needed, we'll stop the entire live stream. Uh, the diversity is really important to us and, uh, and we won't stand for that. And thanks uh, people for speaking up. That's what we uh, require. David, uh, your question was about uh, whether Bitbucket is a competitor. For sure they are a competitor and uh, they're, they're a solid one. And uh, this is a market with, three, with GitHub, uh, GitLab and Bitbucket. And uh, they have some, uh, some, some great things that we could learn from. Daniel asked, does GitLab have a documentation service, kind of like Gitbook or read the docs? Um, I'm not sure. I, I know the people, I've talked to the people from Gitbook a couple of years ago. I've, I'm not sure whether they support GitLab. What uh, we do ourselves with docs.gitlab.com is that we run it as a static site. So we kind of take our slash docs directory and we put it online as a static site with GitLab pages. So that might be the best way to do it. So oh, Sid, uh, Josh Banders uh, says that he was an original signer of the Dear GitHub movement. How much has that letter influenced any of our decisions at GitLab? Thanks. Um, yeah, I think uh, we, uh, we placed a blog post then uh, that said uh, Dear Open Source Contributors. And uh, a lot of the things that people wanted at that point were already inside GitLab. Um, so I think it was validation for us that we were listening to the, that 
listening paid off. We were just listening to what people wanted. And uh, some of the things that we didn't have yet, we uh, after that prioritized. So there's a question by Edwin Castillo asking, how will GitLab be in the next three years? I guess, you know, what is your vision uh, over the next three years? Yeah. Um, so I think we got a, uh, a great product vision for, uh, for this year. Um, if someone could link to our product vision, that'd be great. Um, the basic plan is to go from just dev to also doing all of ops. So really doing complete DevOps. I think that's really exciting. I think what we want to do as, as a company, we want to help other organizations have a 200% faster DevOps cycle. So where you now collaborate um, and you hand off between the different tools, you kind of have your planning tool and then you hand off to the coders and they hand off to the QA people, they hand off to the security people and they hand off to the production people and it's all using different tools. And you have to string all those tools together. We think that's inefficient, not only on the time wasted on integrating all the tools, but also because if you're in one tool, the other people can't work at that point. So you can't work in parallel. If you can work in parallel because you're using a single tool like GitLab, now you can get changes out a lot quicker. And the quicker you can get out changes, the more feedback you get, the more of a sense of progress you have. And I think that's really important in any job. And uh, I that's where we're going to help people and we're going to add more and more features to GitLab to, uh, to get there. So that's the path we're on. As a business, um, we're doubling our incremental ACV every year. So um, a lot of extra recurring revenue every year and we want to IPO by 2020. So in, uh, in three years, that, uh, that should be the case. Sid, do you want to explain ACV to those who might not understand that? Yeah, no? thanks for that. <laughs> um, incremental ACV is uh, incremental annual contract value. It's um, We have a subscription business. If you buy GitLab, whether you run it yourself or on gitlab.com, you get um, a subscription. And if you're in a subscription business, you kind of look at, you don't look at, uh, you, you, you have the money you you already have from the existing subscriptions, you look at what's coming on top of that. And then for the existing people, are they gonna spend more or less with you? Um, so the incremental ACV is like what's getting on top. Suppose you were doing 1 million in revenue last year. If you're doing 3 million at the end of the year, you have 2 million in incremental ACV. Set error ask, what's your favorite IDE and text editor? So said error, uh, look, I was a sublime person for a long time. Now using VS Code locally, but I'm, I'm really liking where uh, the GitLab web IDE is, uh, is going. And sometimes I regress and use sublime still for note taking, not coding. And I try to use Vim a couple of times and I think I know how to delete a row with double D or something, but it's it's, I, I, I'm glad I don't have to earn my money that way because I, I be very poor. But you got it. You, you were able to exit it though. That's yes. I'm able to exit. Yes. <laughs> uh, a question came in from uh, snail mail games said, uh, does GitLab have any built in unit testing or as a plugin for the platform? I was going to maybe cue so, you up for auto DevOps. Sorry if you didn't. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> You want to give it a try, Brendan, the auto DevOps one? Sure, sure. So uh, we, we've got a feature that we, uh, did we GA it in 10.8? Did we know? I know it's either GA it in 10.8 or in 11.0, which is coming out on the It'll GA in 11.0, Brendan. Ah, yeah, June 22nd. Coming yeah, up. so we released a couple of quick things about GitLab. We release on the 22nd of every month. We've done that for almost 80 months. Um, and so we'll be releasing on the 22nd of June, GitLab 11.0, which uh, will... Uh, make auto DevOps generally available. That's something that's been around uh, for most of the 10 series of GitLab. What that does is it lets you upload your code and without having to build anything for your pipeline, uh, it automatically builds your code, automatically runs any unit tests that you have in place, uh, automatically does a bunch of things like security scanning, uh, scanning your container, uh, doing static code analysis, uh, 
a number of other things. And then it also can deploy automatically into production or into a, a review app and then into production uh, if you connect your GitLab instance to a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so there's a lot of great open source magic and some GitLab magic under that. Uh, we use Heroku-ish build packs to detect the language uh, and automatically Dockerize the application. And then we use Helm uh, and Tiller to get that into Kubernetes uh, automatically. So definitely check out Auto DevOps. We'll put a link in, in the chat. Uh, it's one of my favorite features on GitLab. And I think this Wednesday, we're having actually a webinar specifically on CICD. Uh, so we'll also find that link uh, so you can learn about that. Someone asked, where can I get a shirt with the logo of GitLab? Well, thanks for asking there. Uh, Shop.gitlab.com should have the swag. Hey, I'm wondering uh, about something. We're, we're, uh, and I'd love to input from, from the people currently watching the live stream on YouTube and commenting. We're thinking about doing a discount code for people uh, moving to GitLab. So not for the people already on GitLab, but for the people moving kind of to, to help them and, and also to kind of uh, uh, amplify the trend. Um, now we wanna make sure that anything we do is sustainable. So we're thinking about doing the discount off our uh, highest tier. So that would be ultimate or gold and it would be 75% off for a year. And to qualify, you have to Twitter anything which with the hashtag moving to GitLab and you have to email us. What do, uh, what do people think? While that question answers come in, Sid, um, there's a question here that talks about Edwin Castillo. He's asking, are there people from Latin America, like Colombia, Mexico, et cetera, working um, at GitLab? Do you want to comment on how our global workforce is set up? Yeah, for sure. And um, <laughs> we're, we're working on making our team page better because I think it, it, it currently doesn't, most people are not listed on the, everyone is listed on the team page, but most people aren't listed on the map because you have to uh, sign up to teleport for that. But these are people in, uh, in uh, South America. So we have Mario who's in, uh, um, I forgot the country, but it's not going very well in that country right now. Um, Nicaragua. 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 Thanks, guys. Um, and then we might have more, but uh, I think there's way less people on here than are here. So you can uh, you can have a look to all the people working in uh, in GitLab. And I hope that uh, the situation in Nicaragua improves for everyone there. Um, so Sid Sung Kim asked, this might um, turn GitLab into a social network site, but will GitLab provide a feature to contact chat with open source developers? Do you mind to chat a bit about Gitter or? Um... Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Lucas. Um, I, uh, we, we acquired a company called Gitter a while ago. And what Gitter allows you to do is in any project you have, whether it's on GitLab or on GitHub, you can add a button you kind of have an instant chat uh, channel, kind of like a Slack channel or an IC channel, but one that's really easy to access for everyone. And uh, we think that's a great, um, a great thing to do. So recommend using a uh, Gitter for that. Did some responses came in for the discounts um, question you had? Yeah, um, I can do them or, um, right. So, um, Josh Mander says, I have no opinion. I've been a member for two years. Um, Saturday 256 says, sounds good, do it. Uh, Movable Singularity says, yeah, discounts. We have Snail Mail Game saying, do it, do it. Um, and then a couple of other comments kind of with smiley faces. Cool, thanks. Uh, well, uh, we haven't decided yet, but thanks for the input. I'm, I'm glad that it's, uh, it's sounding reasonable. We still have to decide on amount, terms, timing, and everything. But uh, thanks for the feedback. 
Hey, Sid. Um, we have a question from Douglas Augusto. He says, um, has GitLab used machine learning algorithms in any part of the product? Thanks, Luca. Um, we have not. Um, I do think there's, there's a lot of scope for that. And on our uh, direction page, um, we detail some of the things uh, we think we can do with that. So I'll, I'll screen share that. So signal versus noise, especially um, with like all the security testing we do, uh, recommending labels, uh, auto scaling applications, uh, lots of things we can, uh, we can do with ML and AI. But for now, we're super focused on, on doing complete DevOps. So, uh, so we're prioritizing that. So Vede asks, what's the nature of the split between the open and closed source parts of GitLab? Is there potential for closed parts to be opened up or are contributions at risk of being made closed source? Thanks for asking. That's a great question. Um, so a few things. Uh, when something is open, we never close it up. Whether it's our code or community code, that never happens. If you contribute it, you can select which repo you contribute it to. And if you contribute it to GitLab, uh, CE repo, it will always be open source. Uh, sometimes we do open up code that was closed source before. Uh, a good example is GitLab pages. And that's because when we think we've made a mistake and something should have been open source anyway, uh, and we, we find that out. If we make a mistake the other way around and we think like, oh, that should have been closed source, our bad, we will never go back. Another thing uh, in that category said would be the web ID. We thought we were going to make that closed source. Yep. Thanks, uh, thanks for that, Brandon. Good example. Snail Mail Games keeps the great questions coming. Thanks, Snail Mail. Uh, does GitLab pages support preview of 3D models, such as Sketchfab? I don't think so. So love to see that added if it comes without too many dependencies. If there's a helpful suggestion from um, Nemesis Contrias, um, something that could help GitLab too is providing a super simple explanation of why GitLab is a good alternative to GitHub due to the massive migration from Microsoft buying GitHub. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, we're working on a on a blog post that uh, that should have a few of those uh, those things, and and people have been. Um, tweeting reasons why to uh, move to GitLab. And uh, we're working on, on, on kind of um, putting all of that in a blog post. So here's some tweets that we're thinking about. Um, and also for the people at GitLab work, uh, watching this, only four, uh, I think we can, uh, can do a better job here. So would love to uh, have some extra tweets here. I think it's hard for the people on YouTube to contribute because uh, YouTube doesn't let you post any links, but uh, people know a way around that. Uh, maybe after you start, you can start with the slash and then uh, we'll find the tweet. Uh-oh, Michael Skelton says, the importing engine seems to be down. Any ETA on a fix? Uh, I've been in a live stream for the last hour, so I'm not aware what the status is. Can someone check GitLab status Twitter and, and see what's up? Ah, Franks, thanks for mentioning. He, he says, I used GitLab before, the UI wasn't very good. However, on the news, he now checked back and it's much better, 10 out of 10. So that's really great. Do you offer discounts for nonprofit companies slash uh, charities? Unfortunately, right now we do not. Fastly111 asks where GitLab company is registered. So we're based in uh, San Francisco, GitLab Inc. Um, we already also have a couple of companies uh, around the world because we hire people in over in 40 countries now. And in some of those countries, we uh, we have our own organization there on our 
on payroll. Real talk if possible is an aspect crawl. Are all of the GitHub features that one would want, apart from the missing ones, available in GitLab without having to pay? Ooh, that's a good question. I think there's some features that GitHub charges for that we also charge for. Uh, but I couldn't tell you which ones because I don't know. So anyone at GitLab that knows, feel free to speak up. I'm not sure about that, Sid, but I, I, I was just jumping in our um, production Slack channel here. Uh, so the, the importer is working. Uh, there is quite a backlog uh, and some will 502 uh, as I usually mentioned on YouTube. Uh, you should be able to try again. You'll probably be okay. We're currently um, spitting up uh, a large number of Psychic nodes, which is our backend job processing piece of the stack. Uh, and so we're, we're pulling that error rate down, but there, there have been a few. Cool, thanks Brandon. Mohammed asks, what about education discounts or student dev packs? Um, we know that a lot of universities are running GitLab and if they wanna uh, get one of our pay tiers, then they don't have to pay for students. So that's what we currently do, but uh, maybe we should do more there. Does so anybody have the real talk about which GitHub features you have to pay for it. I, I think I think possibly best to look at our pricing page and see what peach, uh, features we uh, we ask money for, because there's there's so many on the pricing page. There's a see all features, and that's uh, that's the most extensive one. I'll uh, I'll screen share to make sure people are clicking the right way. So here's our pricing page. These are like the top line features. And if you click this, you can see all features. Matt asks, is there a way to separate an account into a standalone account I signed into it with GitHub. I think so. I think there's the ability uh, to set a password later on, but I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sure. Yep. Sid, there's a really, I think, important question here from Blackstone. Um, it says, are there any plans to encourage community contributors to contribute to GitLab? I think this is you know, a really key question to answer and highlight the difference between yep. GitHub and us. Yeah, uh, uh, unlike GitHub, you can actually contribute to GitLab, and lots of people do that. Every month, we have about a thousand new changes in GitLab that were contributed by the community. And uh, I think I, I, I recognize Blackstone. So if it's the same Blackstone, uh, he contributed a few, uh, but he's asking for a badge or an icon. And I think that's that's a good request. Like, wouldn't it be cool if your GitLab avatar showed that you contributed to GitLab itself. So I, I like that idea. Um, kind of when you view a project, um, you, a way to distinguish which people contributed to that project and which ones did not. Um, that, that makes sense to me. So feel free to open an, uh, a feature proposal for that. And Sid, didn't we recently have a uh, an announcement or a blog post about our uh, two thousandth community contributor to GitLab recently? Yep, for sure. Kevin asks, "Oh, but one of my repos successfully migrated from GitHub. It's also the only one that had issue tracking set up in GitHub. So I'm wondering if that's causing issues." Hmm. I'm so not sure. Go yeah, ahead. I would say there's two things. Sorry, Sid. There, there's two things there. Uh, one, it could be related. So there is a also an API rate limit that you'll hit eventually um, for your personal rate limit against GitHub. Uh, and so the, there's a lot of API calls made to, to transition the issues over. So you may want to, again, try that again in like an hour or two um, once you're, you've been unrate limited. Thanks, Brandon. Fastly asks, is there plans to integrate Gmail login to GitLab? I think we have login with Google on for gitlab.com, but I'm not 100% sure. 
but I'm like 90% sure. Uh, Fede asks, does GitLab provide repository uh, license metadata? Um, not yet. Um, what we are working on is license management. And what that is, is if, you, if you're an organization and you ship code and it has lots of like open source dependencies you bring in, it will tell you what the licenses are of those dependencies. Um, I think there's also a standard for exposing kind of license information in a, in a, in a, in a standardized format. I don't think that's part of GitLab yet. That would be cool though. So feel free <laughs> to contribute that. And Drew is helping out the person that wanted to uh, make, uh, make sure he, uh, he had a standalone account. So thanks for that, Drew. So what, what I'm seeing in the live stream and there's that there's lots of feature uh, questions about features in GitLab, which is kind of awesome. Um, but I think we, we, so, we solved a lot or we answered a lot of the majority questions about the, the industry developments. Um, Frank, so maybe, maybe we should start wrapping this up. Uh, Frank asks, my bosses are worried about moving over due to the issue I had with uptime. Is there a page where you track system issues? Uh, yes, Frank, um, at GitLab status um, on Twitter, we, tr we tweet about anything that's wrong anytime. Giovanni asks, do you have plans for plugins like AppVayer? I don't think so. Remind me what AppVayer does. I think it's they do CI for Windows. And with GitLab, with GitLab Runner, you can do CI on Windows uh, just as a part of GitLab. So one other question is, I know it's a feature question, but um, Michael Skelta again asks, um, are there any plans to add a feature like pinning or similar to it that will allow you to highlight specific projects? Yeah, I think we have starring right now. Um, I'm not against pinning. I think starring and pinning should be probably separate things, but the starring, we, we wanna prevent having multiple features that are all kind of half done. So I'm, I'm not sure that this is probably a longer conversation. So that should probably happen on our issue tracker. So a doctor clarified that that figure is indeed kind of Win, uh, CI focused on Windows. Yeah, you can just install uh, GitLab Runner on, on Windows and then run the test that way. You do have to kind of bring your own machine. Michael is clarifying by saying he meant to, he, I mean to highlight your largest or larger projects in a large mix. Oh yeah. Like 100 plus repos with two or three that are larger. Okay, I'm, I don't have an opinion about that. Yep. Hey, so uh, it's been a little over an hour, as you noted, a while back. Um, so do you want to check for one last question and then wrap up or keep going or up to you? But thought everyone should remember the time. Yep. Thanks. Let's, uh, the, the last one, David uh, Swartz, you have the last one. How has your infrastructure handled the mass exodus so far? I'm curious because the past day has probably been quite taxing. I think so far, so good. Um, we're still up, we're still importing, but, uh, but we're bracing for tomorrow. We think it's uh, gonna be a lot more tomorrow. Um, so uh, we'll see, uh, but uh, they've done a great job. They, they scaled up uh, multiple parts of our fleet. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Cool, uh, I wanna thank everyone for uh, attending the live stream, asking questions, answering it, and especially Emily for organizing. Have a, have a great day and uh, I'm sure tomorrow will be very interesting. So looking forward to it.